It's not just a game, it's RiverParishFootball.com. This week's highlights after this. Brock's Automotive and Tire Center is your one-stop shop for all your vehicle's needs. We're right along the river in reserve. Brock's Automotive and Tire Center with 24-hour towing service. And hello again, everyone. Welcome to RiverParishFootball.com, the home studios here in Destrehan. I'm Eric Ritchie. Senior writer George Becknell joins us in just a moment. Highlights of our first week of high school football. Actually, it's week two on the schedule. Hurricane Isaac completely wipes out not only all the River Parish games, but virtually every game in the greater New Orleans area. We have highlights of five of our eight teams tonight, which involved four games. Let's get right to it. Without further ado, we begin in Lutcher and check out the new turf. It already has survived a hurricane and looking good for the season opener, hosting McDonough 35. And so are the Bulldogs looking good. Rustin Mathern, the quarterback and MVP, in my opinion, of the Ed Reed Jamboree. He has the shovel pass to Torian Short and that's a touchdown. Bulldogs up 7-0. The Bulldogs defense stifling the Ron Eagles all night. Sully Lesh and Blake Roussel combining on the group tackle. A host of Bulldogs in on that one. Tim Dettelier, he loves that good defense and he loves the offense. Rustin Mathern has been hot since midway part of last season. He hasn't stopped. But he's got a lot of weapons like Sully Martin. That's a big game for Sully. And Lutcher, two up for Hanville in emphatic fashion. Lutcher fan Rachel Almond, she loves it. 40 to 8, the final. Let's go to Laplace, St. Charles Catholic. You're defending 3A state champs Trey and Little Aaron there at Thomas Dupuis Stadium. The Terriers in town from Homa, the Vanderbilt Terriers. They jumped on board quick with a 60 yard touchdown run, and but after. A little fumble. Who's got it at the bottom of the pile? St. Charles. Sean McGraw trying to stop this high-powered Vanderbilt offense. That was one of the few highlights, however, for the Comets defense on this night. The story flat out was number 15 for Vanderbilt, Elijah McGuire. He had a chance to see him two years ago. Now this young man has matured. That's 39 yards and one of his five touchdowns on the night. 378 yards by McGuire. I'm not kidding. That seems like about as much as they gave up all last year. That Comets defense went over a month without allowing a point. Game one, they allow one guy to score five touchdowns and almost 400 yards rushing. The Comets' first big offensive play came from Mario Young. They got all new guys as far as their skilled position players. He cuts through the Terriers' heart of the defense. That's a 54-yard pickup in the second quarter. It set up the game's next score. Brandon Zimmer from five yards out, one of his two touchdowns on the night. 16-7 with 9.08 left in the first half. Later, it was St. Charles' Sam McMahon. New really upending Gage Courts, but in the end, Vanderbilt ends up upending the defending 3A state champs. It was close, 36-33, the final. George Becknell was at that game. We'll talk to him in just a few moments. So Lutcher a winner, St. Charles a loser in the first week of the season. It's time for us to take our first break. When we return, highlights from Hanville hosting Carr and also Destrehan St. James. They go mano a mano, River Parish style. It's a whole lot better for plan service than it is for demand service. We're what satisfaction is supposed to feel like, and we guarantee that satisfaction 100%. Now's the time to call Cajun Comfort Electrical Air Conditioning and Heating and just ask for... Comfort Club! Welcome back to the home offices here at RiverParishFootball.com in Destrehan. I'm Eric Ritchie. A couple of games we didn't make it to highlights starts with East St. John. What an unbelievable week for Philip Banco and the Wildcats. Their field house virtually flooded out. All of their equipment outside of a few black jerseys absolutely washed away with the floods at East St. John. The school itself. They won't be going to school this year at that high school next door in the ninth grade facility. And East St. John, well, they'll be playing at Joe Keller Stadium, but not tonight. Tonight, on the road, up in the Lake Charles area, taking on St. Louis Catholic, and coming up on the wrong end of the score, 
24 to 20 is your final. Leonard Davis, the Wildcats quarterback, had 151 yards rushing, touchdowns of 61 and 80 yards. Jeremy Piper had a pick six, but in the end, St. Louis too tough. Lenny Breda with two touchdowns and two interceptions, including the one that sealed it as East St. John's tough week ends with a loss in the, I guess, standings, but certainly East St. John, the Wildcats, nothing but winners after what they went through this week. Also, another monster story for us this week was the return of Bill Stubbs, the Riverside head coach, his first game back in over a decade, going back to the school he used to coach at, losing tonight at Salmon, 51-8. to Salmon's Chris Thomas racked up 330 rushing yards. Deuce Wallace, the quarterback, the young freshman, hooked up with another youngster, Herb McGee, for a 22-yard touchdown. That was the only scoring of the night for Riverside, who winds up losing 51-8. to Let's go back to the highlights. Hanville taking on a car team who's been to the Dome in each of the last two years, winding up as runner-up in the state. Trey Walls, he says, man, we still have hope despite Hanville trailing Carr 27 to 10 at the half, and here's why. That's Gabe Taylor stepping in front of the pass. That's an interception. Hanville in biz. Even more so when Lynn Simmons chews up big yards like this. Sims had 55 yards rushing, and the only touchdown of the night for Hanville. This particular run set up Craig Ford's 35-yard field goal, making it a 27-13 score in the third quarter. It would get no closer. Devontae Noyle, the quarterback for Carr, had 272 total yards on the ground, 236 on 10 carries. Here's a 50-yard touchdown. He had a pair of rushing touchdowns and a pair of touchdown passes. Sean Evans would close out the scoring for Carr with the touchdown run. Carr racks up 431 rushing yards. The District 4A Offensive Player of the Year, Noyle, was the story. 41-13, the final. Hanville loses. Afterwards, Coach Lou Valden put it in perspective. We blew some coverages. And we lined up wrong on defense, and anytime you do that against a team like Carr, you're going to give up big plays. You know, but I mean, basically it just came down to the fact that they were bigger and faster than us. It's a process, it's a long season. We got eight more, we just go back to work. Whether you win or lose, you go back to work. But that's a good football team. There's a reason why they're in the Superdome the last two years. That's where we want to be. I'm curious to see how we're going to bounce back. I'm, you know, you know, we look at this defeat, and we're going to, I'm going to see, you find out a lot about your players through a, uh, you know, a loss like this. You find out how much pride they have, and how bad they want to, uh, you know, come back and redeem themselves in, at home. All right, let's shuffle off to St. James, the Wildcats versus Wildcats. Stephen Robichaux and Destrahan in the house. Coach Robichaux's first game in the Take Two era. Wildcats were well in control by the time our cameras arrived, up 34 zip. Fourth quarter highlighted by Kenny King. They had 311 total yards. King had a bunch of them right here. Sets up a touchdown run by King himself. 178 rushing yards on the night for Destrehan. They led 40 to nothing. Hey, like in the Ed Reed River Parish Jamboree, despite the score, no let up for St. James. Dequan Sandoff to Seth Keller, a big gain, puts him on the doorstep, and St. James said, we're going to knock this door in. And they get on the scoreboard in the end zone. Sandoff takes it himself from three yards out. Three touchdown passes on the night by Destrehan's Donovan Isom, and the Wildcats roll 47 to 8 and coach Robichaux a winner in take two. I thought we played well early and, mm -hmm. and, and defensively we played well and you know came up with the first two drives flawless right down the field. Defensively we came down came out and three and out twice and we were kind of rolling in and then things went bad and yeah. you know we, that can't happen and then, yeah. uh, you know that's the one thing we preached at halftime we got to continue playing uh, you know wildcat football and getting it done and it just wasn't there for a little while and uh, you know when, when you have those lulls that can get you in trouble and I was real concerned but I, I thought we came back in the second half kind of and turned it back on and uh, kind of got a little sloppy at the end but I thought in the third quarter we did a good job so I was excited about that. You know it's football at St. James you know and this is you know we had a lot of great memories here and uh, just an awesome feeling to be back over here but uh, you know I'm just happy for these kids to get a win and uh, hopefully we can build on it. You know, we've got, got a pretty big one next week. So uh, we'll enjoy this one for the old 24-hour rule and get ready for the car cruise. Hey, you ever wonder where RiverParishFootball.com gets all those scores and all those stories? 
Well, that's how it is right there. It's George Becknell, our senior writer, working hard like he does every Friday night here in the home offices. George will join us on set when we return, looking at the highlights from the first week of the regular season in River Parish football. We're back with George after this quick timeout. When you're driving down the road and you hear this noise, what do you do? It's simple. You call Laplace Glass at 985-652-4222. Go ahead and relax. It's a painless process. Laplace Glass, give us a break. We'll fix it. Welcome back to the home offices of RiverParishFootball.com and Destrehan. George Becknell, the senior writer for our website, joins us now. George, you were at the St. Charles Comets season opener against Vanderbilt. I guess we saw some signs during that scrimmage at U-High in Baton Rouge. The Jamboree, not much offense, a 6-6 tie with East St. John, but I don't think any of us would expect a, a loss like we saw tonight with the Comets in Vanderbilt. Well, they uh, gave up 370-plus uh, yards rushing to Elijah uh, McGuire, the quarterback for Vanderbilt. Uh, just had a tremendous game, uh, although it ended up he scored five touchdowns. They needed every yard and every touchdown because uh, St. Charles, to give them credit, they kept coming back. They found ways. They blocked a kick. They uh, scored at the last play of the first half. They uh, had a, a fumble return right at the end of the, uh, toward the end of the game that put them on top for a while. So they were in the game despite the fact that, uh, you know, they really couldn't stop uh, the Vanderbilt quarterback. Only two winners in the first night. West St. John holding out hope that they can make it three. I guess the biggest surprise or what was the thing that stood out to you in week two of this football season? I think of the fact that the several uh, of River Parish teams that are all known for being good defensive teams really gave up a lot of rushing yards in week one. So I think that's going to be a big emphasis that the coaches are going to talk about between now and, and getting, you know, when you make that big improvement from game one to game two. And I think, you know, we'll see a big difference in that next week. And we'll see a big difference here in our RiverParishFootball.com studios. We're going to get some helmets and, you know, decorate the place a little bit, get some jerseys, maybe some lockers. But that'll do it for our first edition of our highlight show for RiverParishFootball.com. For senior writer George Becknell and all the crew here at RiverParishFootball.com, I'm Eric Ritchie. Thanks for logging on and checking us out. We'll see you again next week. And be sure to watch for the first RiverParishFootball.com Player of the Week. That'll be announced on Tuesday.